hope. It's that evidence of things not seen. Now here verse 2 says, for by it, somebody say for by faith. For by it, it here is the faith. The elders, this means the older ones, obtained a good report. Somebody say they received a good report. Somebody say by faith. Now look in the last part of Hebrews 11, verse 39, and these all, and all, you can go back and read sometime the whole hall of faith that it mentions. And it's not only mentioned in those, but it actually mentions those on down in Hebrews 12, the great cloud of witness. These all haven't obtained or received a good report. Somebody say a passing grade. Oh, through faith, receive not the promise. Wow, and I'll get on that in a moment. But those two scriptures, in the beginning of the hall of faith, Hebrews 11, and at the end, it says they obtained a good report. Somebody say they graduated. Somebody shout they excelled. They overcame. They passed every test with an F. In the kingdom, F don't stand for failure. That is the passing greed. It stands for faith in God. Pastor Michael, by faith, they graduated. By faith, they passed whatever it is they had to go through and friend I've just come to tell you tonight in this moment right here hallelujah that there is a faith in God and it's a now faith praise God that'll cause you to graduate any level anything any place you walk through in life for God said in Mark 11 and 22 and Jesus answering have faith in God Jesus said here's the answer to every question you'll ever have in life. Here it is. Here's the answer. Have faith in God. You can have a nervous breakdown. Come on. You can have a hey man and break down until they have to put you in a straight jacket, shoot you up with medicine, and throw you in a rubber room before you pull your hair out. Or you can have faith in God. Somebody shout if you'll have faith in God. If you'll trust him even when you can't trace him. Friend, It'll be you uh, walking across uh, the stage uh, of faith uh, to receive uh, a diploma. Come on, somebody, a graduation uh, from one place in one level uh, to the next. Uh, if you're going to make it through uh, whatever it is uh, you're going to have to go through, you're going to need a through faith, uh, a through faith uh, to make it through. Uh, somebody shout, uh, trust him. God will promote you. You want him to promote you. If you want to overcome any obstacle, if you want to be able to make it through anything, you've got to have faith in God. Somebody say a now faith, a through faith. It's a graduating faith. Say that with me. A graduating faith, an overcoming faith, an excelling faith. I look back in my life. And if I hadn't made a choice to trust God, I wouldn't be here. I'm talking about literally. The devil that took me out. And what I just told you is the truth. It's more than a fact, it's the faith. Faith is a choice. Say that with me. Faith in God's a choice. A lady told me years ago, I'll never forget, ministering in her house to her. She said, well, you know, Brother Marvin, some of us just lose our faith. Boo hoo. Because he was just, oh, some of us lose our faith. I had to guard myself because I felt like, oh, really? And she kept saying it over and over and over and over. Lose our faith. And I knew how to make people stop crying. You usually have to make them mad first. That's what Jesus did. He came to Jairus' house, and they was hired mourners back then. They got paid to cry and whine. <laughs> what do you do for a living? <laughs> Look at your neighbor said they work for free at church now. 
Jesus walked in Jairus house and she dead, she's sleeping, and they went from crying to <laughs> hey. Whatever it takes. They got aggravated with him too. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But she was just boy, she was just so pitiful and sorrowful and she said it about third time lose our faith and she did I said ma'am I don't mean to interrupt you but I was thinking in my spirit you just lied you did mean to interrupt you about dying here hallelujah I told her I said ma'am we don't lose faith in God I said we choose faith in God what she do <laughs> hey first step to victory here we go she gonna get mad probably first but I said 1 Timothy 1, 19 says, holding faith, say that with me, holding faith and a good conscience which some have put away, somebody say put away, concerning faith and have become shipwrecked. You either hold faith or you put it away. You do. Hebrews 11, the Bible said, I believe it's in verses 24, Moses by faith refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Verse 25, choosing rather to suffer the afflictions with the people of God than enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. Somebody shot by faith. Moses refused to be called something the devil was calling him. Somebody say he had a refusing faith. He refused to be termed something that God said he was not. He had a fighting faith. Devil, you call me what? No. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, the modern church needs a fresh baptism of refusing faith. Hallelujah. I refuse to back up. I refuse to quit. I refuse to stop. I, I refuse to lay back. And his refusing faith led to him choosing to suffer. God's people didn't enjoy some pleasure of sin that was only going to last for a season. So by faith, he chose. You don't lose faith. You choose it. You either choose to trust God or you choose not to. Hello? Boy, that kind of puts some responsibility on us, don't it? Look at your neighbor and say, if you live for him, it be because you chose to follow him by faith. But guess what? If you walk away, I ain't gonna say the devil weren't in it, but don't blame him. Because if you quit, you quit. They can't but one stop you and that's you. The devil, he's not a pushover. He couldn't make Jesus fall over that cliff. Matthew 4, he tempted him to jump off, but he couldn't push Jesus off there. Jesus rebuked him. Said it is written, I shall not tempt the Lord thy God. The devil might can get you up to the edge, but he ain't the one responsible for making you quit, making you jump off, making you stop. Come on, somebody. Old Flip Wilson, you say in the 70s, the devil made me do it. The devil ain't made you do nothing. How in the world can the devil make you do something if Jesus is in you? To make you do it means he'd have to make Jesus do it. Listen to what Jesus said. Boy, this is powerful. Jesus said, the prince of this world comes and he finds nothing in me. I believe that's John 14, 30. He said, the prince of this world comes, but he finds nothing in me. In other words, Jesus said, when the devil comes to me, he finds nothing of himself in me. And friend, if Jesus is in you, and if Jesus is in me, and I'll say it for me, I can't say it for you, but he's in me. When he comes, uh, come on somebody, hallelujah, and if Jesus is Lord of my life, uh, come on, and if I'm choosing him, uh, hallelujah, when the devil comes, uh, he ain't got enough to make the God in me stop, uh, hallelujah, so if I'm surrendered continually and choose faith in the one that's in me, guess what, I can't be stopped either. I can't made, be made to quit either. Anybody here, Holy Ghost, uh, it's only when we don't submit to him uh, that we're unable to resist the devil. Because when you submit to God, then you'll resist the devil, he'll flee from you, James 4 and 7. So if you're having a problem resisting the devil, your problem ain't resisting the devil, it's, it's, your problem is submitting to the Lord. 
Glory to God. What was that all about? I don't know, but I felt like I was about to blow into dynamite, dynamite. Woo! Hallelujah. A graduating faith. I was going to go to Jeremiah 29, but I can't. That's it. That's what the Lord wants you to hear tonight. Hallelujah. Where are you at in God right now? Somebody shout, if you're going to go somewhere in God you've never been, you're going to do it through faith. Along the way, you're going to have to incorporate some refusing faith, and you're going to have to day by day choose faith in God. Because somebody shouts, you can't lose it, but you have to choose it. And if you're so called to lose it, it's because you chose. Come on, somebody, not to follow him. Anybody got your mind made up? Anybody declare with me tonight, I'm choosing Jesus. Because guess what? If I'm not, I'm choosing the devil. Hallelujah. Anybody here, Holy Ghost? Come on, the spirit of faith is in this room tonight and God wants to charge you with a now faith. Hallelujah. He wants to charge you tonight with a through faith. He wants to charge you with a refusing faith, a faith that chooses. Come on, somebody to hang with Jesus even when it's afflictions, even in the midst of trials and troubles. Hear the Holy Ghost. My God, this graduating faith. This is how you're gonna overcome anything comes your way God said there's a great and effectual door open unto you but there are many adversaries 1 Corinthians 16 and 9 I ain't quoted that scripture in years Holy Ghost just brought it to me God says there's great and effectual very effective fruitful doors open there's a great and effectual door open unto you, but there are many adversaries. For every door that God opens that's great and effectual, somebody shout, the enemies get larger. It ain't that God's going to open the door, and him, the doors that you're needing him to open are already open. The reason some never walk through them, they don't stay with him long enough. That means before you were even born every door as far as his kingdom and his plan and his call for your life your future was already opened in him and as you stay with him in faith he will bring you to those moments where you step through what you think he's opening but it's always been open he said in revelation 3 and 8 i've set before you an open door some i say before you before you means before you, ahead of you, the future. Somebody shout, the open door is not behind me. It ain't if I turn back, I'll never walk through it. It's already open, but it's in my future. Hell don't fight you over where you've been or even where you're at. Hell's always fighting you over where you're headed. It's a future fight. Don't you ever forget that? Saul was a typology of Satan, and he eyed David from that day forward. Hallelujah. You find that, amen, in the word of God, I believe it's in 1 Chronicles 18 and verses 9. Thank you, Lord. Amen. But from that day forward, he had his eye on David. He wasn't worried about where David had been. He was, he was concerned about where he was headed. And that's what the enemy was after. That's what the enemy was after. And God says, anytime I have a great and effectual door open, every one of you in here, in the kingdom of God, have a great and effectual door. Somebody say a big door because you serve a big God. Effective, very fruitful. Large, massive things God wants to do in and through you. It's just because your hair's turn gray, some's turn gray, some's turn loose. Amen. Don't, <laughs> don't, it don't make no difference. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. It don't mean God says time's out. Moses didn't walk through his door until he was 80. He just had one thing to do. And it took him that long to step through it and do it. <laughs> My God. <laughs> oh, geez. I'm glad they can hear you. Anyhow, but this, this, is, this is amazing. Every one of us Somebody say, if you've been born again, every one of us are en route 
to that open door. Now you can delay getting there if you disobey where you are. You can delay where you're heading if you disobey where you are. <laughs> you, you got to obey him at the level where you are or you'll delay the level where he's wanting to take you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo hey, Lord. I done said Flip Wilson. I'm thinking about George Jefferson and Wheezy now. I'm moving on up. Somebody, <laughs> Wheezy, you got to keep moving. Now I didn't just call Sister Melissa <laughs> Wheezy. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Somebody shout, you got to keep moving. Move, 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 move. Oh, yeah, yeah. You got to move, 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 move. By faith. Oh, glory to God, Noah. When God told him to build an ark for the saving of his house, he moved with fear. My God, have mercy. Somebody say, real faith in God will keep you moving. Look at your neighbor and say, real faith in God likes to move it, move it, move it. He likes to move it. He likes to move it, move it, move it, move it. Look at your neighbor and say, have faith in God and move it, move it, move it, move it. Oh, glory. It's Brother Michael's fault. He started off causing everybody to crack up right <laughs> For that whale of a story. <laughs> Don't ride the wheel. <laughs> Amen. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. And since then, we've had open umbrellas, hallelujah, and graduation blooms. But listen. Oh, glory, man, I feel the joy of the Lord. Somebody shout, that means strength is in the house. Nehemiah 8 and 10. Oh, if you're laughing, that means your strength has come. Come on, laugh a little while longer. Oh, glory, glory, God, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Mm. Proverbs 17, 22. Thank you, Lord. But the great and effectual door, it's before you, it is open. But some might say many adversaries. You've heard the old saying, new levels, new devils. I had a dream years ago, and I saw a small truck. And in the dream, God revealed to me, he said, this is the size of your ministry right now. Then in the dream, I saw a larger truck. And then the third, so I saw a semi. And then semis. And he said, I'm not showing you about trucks. I'm showing you about the size, yeah, of what I'm going to trust you with. Oh, no, no. And I'll never forget in that smallest truck, I was sitting in, this was years ago, I was actually in an RV in Adel, Georgia, beside a church. My tent was sitting up in that churchyard. This was been in 2009. And that night I was awakened. I mean, son, trembling. There were so many demons and devils. I couldn't even hardly sleep that night. I mean, just wrestling and tossing. They would cut in my dreams, attacking me. But in that, while I, God was showing me that dream, after I'd done woke up one time, you know, probably twice, amen, just tormented in the spirits, just attacking me like, God, I can't even describe it. And then when I finally, somewhere in the, after midnight, 3 a.m., somewhere, finally dozed back off again. And in this dream, it was God revealing to me what was going on. And in the dream, I saw these four different levels, small truck larger truck, semi-truck, and then semis of trucks. But in that first cab of that truck, I remember, and God showed it to me in the form of like a, a huge spider-like creature. It weren't a spider, but it did look like, I don't know what it was. All I know, it was a devil, and it was huge. And it was trying to get in the driver's seat. It was trying to take over the wheel. Hello? But in the dream, I kept wrestling with it. And I would tell it, no. And I'd kick on and hit it. And it would come all over. And I'd, amen. And when I woke up, the Holy Ghost spoke to me. And he told me about the different levels, the, the sizes. And he said, Marvin, 
The reason that spirit seems so large even at this level is it seemed bigger than the truck. I'm serious. That I was in it. He said, because this spirit is not fighting you over where you are. This spirit wants to stop you from going where I have planned for you to go on that level. He said, when the enemy wants to keep you from the future that's large in me, he said, Goliaths are sent. The size of the enemy you fighting right now is the size of the future in the kingdom of God you're headed to. He taught me that that night. And then a storm hit before daybreak and tore the awning off of the blessed God RV I was staying in. Hello? I mean, <laughs> it was a rough night. But I got that revelation out of it. If there's a big enemy fighting you right now, don't you get locked down and trapped in the now, in the present, because it ain't about right here. That enemy is trying to stop where it is God's went about to take you in the future in his kingdom, where that open door is, and that devil's afraid that if you follow God that distance, you'll step through that place, and they'll be served their eviction notices. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. And I don't know when. There's coming a message. I've been toting it for. Praise God. Preach it, Mark. But tonight makes 11 months. Acts 29. The last Sunday of June next month, I'll make a year. And we're going to have a celebration. But Psalms 118.5 said, I called upon the Lord in distress. It was hard, and the Lord answered me, and listen to what he did. He set me in a large place. That word large place in Psalms 118.5 simply means a place without limits. No restrictions. Day is coming when there'll be no need for. Somebody say no need for what it is. It seems like you've always had need for. Oh, how many times have I heard different ones prophesy to me through the years the same thing. The day is coming Whew. where there'll be no need for all that that you used to have need. Somebody shout, the fight now is over the large place in the future of God's kingdom that he's taken us to. All this is practice. <laughs> oh, glory. I hear the Lord saying, Marvin, these past 11 months have been nothing but a recital or excuse me, a rehearsal for the recital that's getting ready to take place. Somebody shout, it's just been 11 months of rehearsal. Hallelujah. I want to prophesy to somebody, your ministries through the years up to now has been nothing but a rehearsal. God's been preparing you through all that you've had to endure and go through. Hallelujah. To prepare you for the large thing he's getting ready to do. Lord says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. <laughs> don't be afraid. Luke's never said, don't be afraid to move with God. Don't be afraid to step in faith. Don't be afraid just to do what he said to do. Whew. My Lord Jesus. Mm. And Lord... Sarah, by faith, judged to you faithful, Hebrews 11, 11. Somebody shout, she judged God faithful. Somebody say a judging faith. Boy, I need to preach that sometime. All them people that say you ain't supposed to judge. Sarah judged God. 
She judged him faithful. Did he do what he said he'd do? And her faith that she judged God by as faithful caused her barren womb to open up and to receive Abraham's seed, and she brought forth an Isaac, even in her old age. Somebody shout, she judged God faithful, and her faith in God healed her body. If you need a miracle in your body tonight, judge him faithful. If he promised and he did by his stripes, she were healed, 1 Peter 2, 24, because every last Sunday night of every month, we don't want to forget that he's a healing Jesus. Come on, somebody. And we've kept it that way from the first service. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's the Holy Ghost right now. God, as people put their now faith in you, Lord, I pray for miracles. You told me, God, I remember at 530, you told me you want to heal people's bodies in here tonight. Hallelujah in Jesus' name. Don't you wait for me to call something out. If there's something in your body you need God to move and do right now and if you're watching uh, come on stretch your hand out and believe with us uh, tonight hallelujah Pastor Michael get some oil on your hands uh, hallelujah glory to God uh, hey amen I don't know where my brothers and all's at tonight God send them some brothers uh, hallelujah but uh, I need somebody to help me out to catch uh, praise the Lord God but I want to lay hands on people right now if you need a miracle in your body come right now form a line wherever however you want to come in the name of Jesus, I don't have to ask you a hundred things, I, and unless God gives me a word of knowledge, I don't need to say anything beyond what it is we're doing right now. In the mighty name, you help us, Nicholas. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord God. Thank you, brother. Amen. Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus, uh, Lord God, I rebuke this. I command it go from her body in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost, uh, Lord. I command this to leave my mama's body in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, Lord, I command this to leave Aunt Geraldine's body be healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you for doing it, Holy Ghost. Come right here, Brother Nicholas. Get right behind her. Holy, no, directly in behind her. Hallelujah. Command it to go. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus Christ. Be whole, be healed for the glory of God. Thank you, Jesus. Come right here, sister. Thank you. Come on over here, somebody, and help us. Holy Ghost, I thank you for a miracle. I thank you for a miracle, Lord. I rebuke it. I command it to loose your flesh now for the glory of Jesus and him alone. Behold, himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses, Matthew 8, 17. We call things that are not as though they were. Romans 4, 17, be healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come, glory. Come here, Sister Sandra, and you come around over here. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for healing, Sister Tammy. In the name of Jesus. A tangible touch, God. Just like the woman with the issue of blood, God, in Mark 5, she felt in her body she was made whole. Hey, I prophesy the feeling's going to come. Oh, by faith. Oh, what she feels now is going to be changed. Hell about Sunday, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I rebuke this infirmity in the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of the Most High God. And I thank you, Holy Ghost, now. In Jesus' mighty name, we command it to go, Lord. Thank you for doing it. Thank you for doing it. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands. Give him an eye of faith. Brianna lays a song up there and says, Oh, faithful one, let that play and give him some effects. Come on, give him praise tonight. I'm going to move this umbrella out of the way in case somebody needs to come in these altars. Holy Ghost. God, I pray for people at home, God, that need miracles in their body. We speak your blood in the mighty name of Jesus, and we thank you for miracles, signs, and wonders, Lord. Lord, touch Josh in his stomach tonight. He's had a virus. We speak your blood. Be healed. Jesus by the name you are the only one who never lets me down you've always been my tower of strength behold and the promises you make are everlasting vows behold in Jesus name and I'm overshadowed 
with your blessing. Turn the music up there. Again. Lord, you've always been faithful to me. Oh, faithful one, I will have myself. up in your love I will never come to harm Oh no You are my faithful My faithful one Yes you are Jesus believe his word and say his praise Psalms 106 12 come on if you believe him praise him tonight even when I am weak your strength always holds me as long as I am in you I know I'm safe I depend upon the shelter of your love and arms and I'm always of your grace how faithful you have been to me oh faithful one I will hide myself in you oh faithful Wrapped up in your love, I will never come to harm. You are my faithful, my faithful. Faithful is he that called you, and he'll do it. First Thessalonians 5, 24. Let's walk by faith as we quit tonight, as we end this service. Come on, walk by faith one more time. Yeah, come on. Somebody give him a faith shout. Give him a faith dance. Give him a faith praise in here. Oh, be the last song. We're going to close out with what we started out with in there. Yeah, come on. Let's walk by faith and not by sight. Say it for this 5, 7. i 
step out take to live by faith I put my trust in you yeah I walk by faith each step I take to live by faith I put my trust in you every step I take a step of faith No weapon formed against me shall prosper And every prayer I make is a prayer of faith And if my God is for me, tell me who can be against me I walk by faith each day Second Corinthians 5 and 7 is a step of faith. How's it 54 17? No weapon born against me shall prosper. James 5 15. Every prayer I make is a prayer of faith. Romans 8 31. And if my God is for me, tell me who can be against me. I want Step by day to live by faith, Lord, I put my trust in you. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Look at your neighbor and say, keep the faith, but not to yourself. Share it with somebody. Tell somebody about Jesus.